So we got a email inquiry the other day with a whole heap of questions and we thought this is really great to make a video because the questions that were asked were what we get asked time and time and time again. So we want to use this as an example and just answer what this person is asking us about. Let's get into it. Hello my favourite vegan couple. Hello. Hi. I need your help. Okay. We're here. <laughs> I've been trying to be vegan for almost a year now but for some reason I keep falling off the bandwagon. The thought, the quote that comes to mind is from 900 year old wise Yoda from Star Wars, do or do not, there is no trying. It's deep man, it's deep. <laughs> so step one is you need the education. You need to know why you're doing this. You need to know how bad animal foods are for your health. So watch forks over knives. You need to know what's happening to the environment. Cowspiracy is the documentary for that. And of course you need to know about the animals lives that are at, you know, steak, pardon the pun, every time you eat animal foods. So um, there's farm to fridge, a short version, or you can go for the full long documentary of earthlings. You need to educate yourself and that's going to help you stay on the vegan lifestyle for life. The next thing this person says is, I'm sure that it's that I'm not eating enough. That's absolutely, that's So you already thing. know, fantastic, great. <laughs> because I'm always thinking of food and craving anything fat, sweet and salty. But no matter how big of a healthy vegan meal I eat, I'm always left unsatisfied. So again, you need to be objective. Uh, no matter how big I eat, what's big to one person is you know small to another and vice versa. So you need to be objective, particularly when you're starting out. And log a day's food into chronometer.com and uh, you know see how many calories exactly that you're eating. Mm. And also because because you say you're always thinking about food and always craving food, that's a you don't even have to do that. I mean, it's a no brainer. We know that it's if a clear you, indicator from the body that you know it needs starving. more food. Yeah. food. Like we are so full every day. It's like oh my god, it's lunchtime. We've got to eat again. Yeah, people <laughs> ask us, do we snack? The answer is no, not because you know we're against snacks or anything. It's just that we eat so much at each of our three square meals of predominantly whole foods. Um, that there's just there's no, no room. room. No. <laughs> so if you're, you know, craving, oh, you say that you're never um, satiated. Well, A, that's because you're not eating enough calories, but also where are your calories coming from? So the more you stick to whole foods, they are so satiating. They're full of fiber and nutrients and you just like... They're nutritionally oh. dense and nature has designed them that way. Yeah, it's very hard to eat whole plant foods in big quantities and not feel satiated. Yeah. I don't think it's actually possible. No. I don't know. Um, I'm afraid of eating up to 2,000 calories, so you know, fear, false evidence appearing real. Because I'm five foot two and I feel that I definitely don't need that much food and I will gain weight. Okay, so you're not even eating 2,000 calories. This is... no, 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 no. 2,000 calories is the minimum. I mean, you're five foot I'm and five how foot. much do you eat a day? I eat between two and a half to 2,700 calories a day. I'm five foot and I'm 35 and a half years old. So this person and most of the people that email us are a lot younger. And you know, usually they say, I mean, as you get older, you don't eat as much and you don't need to eat as much. Well, I'm eating more than these teenagers. You know, I'm only five foot. Uh, so she says, I will gain weight uh, because I will be eating more than burning. So it's the old calories in, calories out mm. theory or mentality and mindset. Um, regarding calories, not all calories are created equal. Uh, take identical twins and one of them eats 2,000 calories a day of whole plant foods and the other one eats, I should say, low fat whole plant foods and the other one eats 2,000 calories of animal products and junk food um, and do that for a few years. At the end of those few years, those identical twins are going to have very different body shapes, compositions, sizes, weights. Yeah. It's what you're eating that really makes the difference. I'm a student, aka sedentary lifestyle. No energy to work out. You have no energy <laughs> to work out because you're not putting enough energy into your body. It's not going to magically you know, feel like wanting to exercise. Mm. The calories have to be there for the desire to exercise to happen. Mm, and this whole idea of a sedentary lifestyle, well, technically we have a sedentary lifestyle. We sit at the computer from, well, first thing in the morning, we're online. And then, say, from 10, 10, 30, all the way till the evening, we are sitting in one spot. What we do do is we move our body once every day, you know, hour, hour and a half. Yeah, the so body is designed to move. It's not an excuse. And if you can't, work out how to be active just for an hour as a student, what hope are you going to have for the rest of your life as an adult working, having a career, maybe having a family and a relationship? 
Like that all takes so much time. You need to get into a routine of saying, whatever else is going on, I'm going to move my body. That's it, that, it's not even an excuse. Um, mm. Live in a cold climate, excuse, go to a gym, use an indoor bike. Exactly. Yeah. No. Um, where it's below zero degrees almost for half of the year and fruit isn't of the best quality. Okay, yeah, again with the climate, yeah. just uh, exercise indoors and fruit isn't the best quality, that's fine. I mean, fruit is great, uh, but if you've got poor quality fruit, you that's fine, you just it. eat starches. Yeah, no problem. I hate milk on its own, but stuff like puddings and desserts is something I crave too often. <laughs> so she's saying that puddings and desserts typically have dairy in them and she craves those. What you're craving is carbohydrates. Uh, so you can still have your puddings and your, what was the other thing? Desserts? Yeah. Uh, just vegan versions of that are, you know, mm. high calorie, high carbohydrate, satiating. Yeah, use almond milk, oat milk, coconut milk. There's plenty of plant milks to choose from. Also where I live, there aren't many vegan uh, options in restaurants. And if they are, they are low calorie and not filling at all. Rubbish! Vegan options are rice and potatoes. They are the most filling foods on the planet. Every restaurant has rice and potatoes, hands down. They're likely to have vegetables and beans. You Possibly can... even pasta. Exactly, everyone has pasta, bread. You know, they're all high carb and you just have to do the best that you can. I mean, how often do you eat at a restaurant? You shouldn't not be on this lifestyle just because you might go to a restaurant once a week or even if it's a couple of times a week. You know, that's really not an excuse. Um, I don't know what to do at this point. You just have to set your priorities. I mean, what do you actually want? Do you want to be fit and healthy? Do you want to do the best thing for your health, for the animals and the planet? You have to go vegan. You have to get on this lifestyle. It's really simple. There's not really much to debate here or kind of weigh up. I hate contributing to the death of animals. Good. So don't like do it. Like a compassionate person. Uh, I've turned my friend vegan almost a year ago and she's loving it, but I just can't do it. Maybe she's eating more calories than you. And it's not that you just can't do it, you're not choosing it, mm. okay? We hear this over and over and over again. And to care about other people, animals and the planet, you need calories, you need sufficient mm. glucose, you know, running to the cells of your brain so that you can think critically, logically, mm. that you, your mind can function clearly. If you're not eating enough calories, you're just not going to have that empathy, that compassion, and that willingness to you know act in a way that relieves suffering you know for all beings. That's right. If you're eating less, if you're scared to eat 2,000 calories because you might gain weight, you're not functioning properly. Your brain is not getting enough glucose. It's in survival mode rather than you know thriving mode. And yes, even this whole thing about too scared to eat up to 2,000 calories or more because you're going to gain weight. Well, that's very likely that that's going to happen because you've been starving yourself. So you've damaged your hormones, you've damaged your metabolism, your body's hungry because you're craving food and you're thinking about food um, all the time. So what you do put in now, it's kind of going to store it for a little bit because it's scared that you're going to starve it again. So you have to expect that there's going to be weight gain. But it's that's the, law of, the universal law of cause and effect. It can't be avoided. Yeah. Um, let's finish this up. So I uh, need some help. Ple you know, I need something enlightening right now. Eat more food and make it vegan, mm. predominantly whole plant foods. Watch Earthlings and think about the planet beyond just your uh, obstacles that you're creating for yourself and your weight. So no more excuses, get your priorities straight and just do it, just get on with it. Hope you like this video guys, if you did please give it a thumbs up, comment down below what are your thoughts on this topic, we'd love to hear from you. And remember until next time, going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do. See you next video guys. Bye guys. Finally sitting down to lunch. We got pad thai, we got some vegan burgers.